Welcome to the Economic Insights channel. Today we'll discuss a concept that is becoming increasingly important in global politics and economics, the Global South. Have you ever wondered what it is and why its role is becoming crucial for the future of the entire world? The Global South is not just about geography but rather about geopolitics, the changing rules of the game on the international stage with major threats and new opportunities. The nations that were once on the periphery of global processes are now emerging as key players, not only in economics. At first glance, it may seem that these countries are united only by their geographic location, but the reality is far more complex. Furthermore, the countries of the Global South now generate over 40% of the world's GDP and are showing higher economic growth rates than mature economies in Europe and the US. In this video, we'll explore what the Global South is, why its influence is growing, and what threats and opportunities it poses to the world. Understanding this topic is essential to envision the future of the global economy and politics. Let's get started! And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share your thoughts in the comments. The concept of the Global South the term Global South began to be actively used in the 1980s as an alternative to the traditional terms Third World or Developing Countries. It emerged amid changes in the global economic and political system following World War II and during the Cold War. In the 1970s, there was increased interaction among countries that remained on the periphery of global processes those that did not belong to the Western Bloc led by the U.S., the so-called Global North, and did not align with the Soviet Bloc. Most of these countries tried to maintain a policy of non-alignment. This movement, initiated by countries like India, Egypt, Yugoslavia, and Indonesia, sought neutrality in the Cold War context. The non-aligned movement was founded in 1961 with its participants striving to avoid participation in large military political alliances like NATO or the Warsaw Pact. However, it's important to note that some countries in the Global South had close ties with the Soviet Union and were even its allies. For example, Cuba, Vietnam, Angola, and Ethiopia were actively supported by the USSR especially in military and economic terms. The term Global South was introduced to designate countries that are mostly located in the Southern Hemisphere, countries with low and middle incomes that have historically been on the periphery of the global economy and politics. The term gained popularity after the Brandt Report in 1980, which proposed a new approach to global development and divided the world into the North and South. Its first usage dates back to the late 1960s when political activist Carl Oglesby wrote about the Vietnam War. The Global South is often seen as the counterpart to the economically developed industrialized countries of the Global North, which have high per capita incomes, advanced infrastructure, and stable political systems. Countries of the Global South include African nations like Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya, Egypt, Ghana, and Ethiopia. Latin American countries such as Brazil, Argentina, Mexico, Colombia, and Peru. Asian countries including India, China, Indonesia, Pakistan, the Philippines, and Vietnam, as well as some countries in Oceania like Papua New Guinea and Fiji. While there is no official list of Global South countries, experts agree that about 100 countries belong to this group. Historical Context The roots of the concept of the Global South trace back to the mid-20th century when the world was grappling with the aftermath of World War II and the emergence of a global standoff between superpowers, the U.S. and the USSR. The world was divided into two political ideological camps, the Capitalist West and the Socialist East. During the Cold War, this polarization peaked as competing blocs critically influence political and economic situations worldwide. The idea of dividing the world into the Global North and the Global South is relatively new, gaining traction in political and economic discussions after the fall of colonial empires 
and the independence of many African, Asian, and Latin American countries. These regions often didn't fit into the traditional East and West blocs, typically finding themselves on the periphery of global political processes. This is one of the key features of the Global South. These are countries that were not part of the main conflict, and their fate was shaped by the rivalry between superpowers. After World War II, an active process of decolonization began. Many countries, having freed themselves from dependency, sought to find their place in the New World Order. However, their economic position, infrastructure, and political systems were often underdeveloped, leaving them vulnerable to external pressure. During this period, political leaders in such countries began to forge new paths of development, striving to avoid direct dependence on the two competing blocs. They formed the Non-Aligned Movement, established in 1961. This alliance became the voice of countries seeking to maintain independence in international politics avoiding the rigid frameworks of the Cold War. The non-aligned movement played a vital role in shaping the modern understanding of the Global South. Within its framework, countries discussed shared problems, such as poverty, economic dependence, and the pursuit of sustainable development. For many Global South countries, the necessity of developing alternative economic and political models that would allow them to grow independently of global superpower influence remained critical. In the context of globalization, Global South countries have increasingly played a prominent role on the world stage. Over the past decades, their voice has become significant in global political and economic matters. Many of these countries, for instance, have become key exporters of raw materials such as oil, gas, and minerals boosting their influence in the global economy and affecting political dynamics worldwide. Criticism of the concept. The term encompasses a wide range of countries with vastly different histories, economies, ideologies, climates, and interests. Some argue that grouping them under one term is entirely inappropriate. Can the economy of India, one of the world's largest, really be compared to that of a small African country reliant on exporting one or two resources? Of course not. That's why many experts believe the term complicates a proper understanding of reality. The main issue with the term is its overly general nature, which turns it into a one-size-fits-all category for very diverse countries. The Global South includes both democratic and authoritarian regimes, countries with different economic systems and levels of development. For example, India and China. One is the world's largest democracy, while the other is an authoritarian regime. Despite their economic growth, their political and social systems are diametrically opposed. Some argue that lumping such countries together and defining this category as distinctly separate from the global north hinders our understanding of the complexity of the modern world. Moreover, many Global South countries pursue their own interests, which often conflict with one another. For instance, some nations prioritize raw material exports, while others focus on developing high technology and avoiding resource dependency. This makes it difficult to form a united voice for these countries on the international stage. Thus, the term Global South is a useful but also limited tool for describing the vast and diverse world of developing nations. To truly understand their role and influence in global politics, we need to dig deeper considering their unique characteristics and contradictions. The Role and Influence of the Global South The Global South is home to over 6 billion people, with an average life expectancy of 68 years and an average age of around 25 years, compared to the global average of 30 years. This means the population of the Global South is significantly younger. The Global South accounts for more than half of the world's GDP, 53.3% to be exact. Moreover, the Global South is growing economically much faster than the North. Over the past decade, 70% of global GDP growth was generated by Global South countries, 
compared to about 28% from the global north. The global south's per capita GDP growth rate is 6%, three times higher than that of the global north. Countries in the global south are rich in natural resources such as oil, gas, minerals, and forests. For example, Africa is a major supplier of minerals and precious metals. Nations in this informal group are also significant agricultural producers. Brazil and Argentina, for instance, are leading exporters of soy and corn. Some global south countries possess substantial energy resources such as oil and gas, e.g. Saudi Arabia. But perhaps the greatest wealth of the global south is its people. The population exceeds 6 billion compared to 1.6 billion in the global north. Additionally, the Global South's population is growing at an average of 1.4% per year, while the Global North's population is growing at just 0.4% per year. People in Global North countries live about 10 years longer, around 78 years, compared to 68 years in the Global South. Workers from the Global South significantly fuel the global economy. For instance, in 2021, wealthier countries imported 906 billion hours of embodied labor, the total amount of labor needed to produce goods or services from start to finish from poorer countries, while they exported only 80 billion hours of labor. While it's often believed that the South is catching up with the North, a new study shows that the gap is widening. Wages in the Global North have risen 11 times more than wages in the Global South between 1995 and 2021. Despite significant economic inequality, the Global South has vast resources that make its countries key players in the global economy, influencing international markets and political relations. Who leads the Global South? The Global South is not a formal bloc, there is no single agreement or organizational secretariat. However, some countries play a more prominent role than others. India is one of the leading advocates of the Global South. Its Prime Minister initiated and hosted two Voice of the Global South summits in 2023, gathering over 100 countries to share their perspectives and priorities on a common platform. The Economist magazine notes that China has launched a systematic campaign to present itself as the natural leader for developing countries. President Xi Jinping has described China as part of the Global South. However, S. Raja Mohan, a former member of India's National Security Council, argues that both China and India promote the idea of the Global South as part of a broader global power struggle between China and India and between China and the United States. According to an analysis by the South African Institute of Strategic Studies, South Africa has sought to position itself as a leading voice of the Global South. President Cyril Ramaphosa has emphasized the need to strengthen the voice of Africa and the Global South in the broader multilateral system. China, as the largest economy among Global South countries, has long aspired to superpower status and plays a special role. Through initiatives like the Belt and Road, China strengthens its influence not only in Asia, but also in regions like Africa and Latin America. By engaging with developing nations, China helps them build infrastructure, making it a key player in shaping the new world order. The influence of the global south. The world is nearing what some consider the end of Western dominance. At the Voice of the Global South Summit in January 2023, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi said, We, the global south, have the biggest stakes in the future. As the global governance model of eight decades slowly changes, we must try to shape the new order. These are certainly reasonable claims as 88% of the world's population lives outside the West, in countries now referred to as the Global South. Many Global South countries in Latin America, Africa, and Asia are no longer passive participants on the global stage. They are increasingly acting independently of the West. 
Signs of this emerged more than a decade ago when America, the world's most powerful country, led a global campaign to dissuade countries from joining China's Belt and Road Initiative. Yet more than 140 countries did just that. Likewise, it is no surprise that the United States has failed to convince Brazil, Argentina, Egypt, Thailand, Indonesia, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo to try to isolate China, as these countries once agreed to isolate the Soviet Union during the Cold War. The agency of the Global South, despite the diversity of its countries, is growing. On the global stage, there have already been several striking moments when the voices of the Global South were heard. At COP27 in 2022, Mia Motley, the Prime Minister of Barbados, heightened the debate on climate finance with her Bridgetown initiative, aimed at transforming the global financial system to radically improve the provision of financial aid and credit to poorer countries vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. In September 2023, at the G20 summit, the African Union was given a permanent seat at the G20, significantly amplifying the voice of the Global South. Equally noteworthy is the growing influence of other Global South forums and institutions. The BRICS Forum, which includes Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, was created in 2009 as a counterbalance to the G7. Today, the influence of BRICS is growing. In 1980, the G7 accounted for about 50% of global GDP at purchasing power parity, while the BRICS countries, excluding Russia, which was then part of the Soviet Union, accounted for about 11%. Today, the G7 accounts for 30% of global GDP, and the BRICS countries, around 30%. Notably, the number of BRICS members is growing with Turkey recently joining this club. The future of the Global South. While some significant countries in the Global South, like Argentina and Egypt, face challenges, there are signs that many people living in Global South countries, particularly in Asia, are incredibly optimistic about the future. A 2021 UNICEF report showed that 59% of young people in high-income countries believe today's children will be in a worse economic position than their parents, and only 31% think they will be better off. By contrast, 69% of young people in low and lower middle income countries believe children will live better lives. Only 24% think they will be worse off. Why is the Global South so optimistic? Consider the 3.5 billion people in China, India, and ASEAN countries. In 2000, only 150 million of them had middle-class living standards. Today, that number has grown to 1.5 billion, double the total population of Western countries. And it's projected to reach 3 billion by 2030. The role of the global south in the future world order will depend on several factors, not least of which is their ability to integrate and act as a united force. While these countries have significant economic, political, and cultural differences, they share a common aspiration for a fair and balanced world where every country's voice is heard. Issues like climate change, sustainable development, and economic stability are key for the global south, and it is here that these nations can offer unique solutions that will benefit the rest of the world as well. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. You can also support us on Patreon. The link is down below. Thank you for watching and support.